Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Love Warrington Show, episode three. I'm Gary Skentleberry, and uh, we're going to be visiting the cultural quarter today. And I'm joined by our property expert once again. And I've got Gary with me from Belvoir Sales and Lettings. Good Hi, afternoon, Gary. Gary. Hi, Gary. You okay? Yeah, we're here again. Good to see you again. Yeah, we've been dealing with um, a few comments from our videos in the past. Lots of positive and some negative. A but, few, yeah. Yeah, but we're here to be an independent voice for Warrington. Yes. Uh, we're passionate about Warrington. We love Warrington. And we're going to show people that there are some really good sides to the town as well as the negative ones. Yes. And I think it's quite appropriate we're starting again here. Uh, in the cult cultural quarter, we're on Springfield Street, the former post office is there just behind you, yeah. and the lounge. And of course, when we finished the last video, we were talking about the tragedy of the Warrington bombing and, and the, how a, a tragedy had become a positive with the Peace Centre yeah. following the loss of the two boys, yeah. uh, Tim Parry and Jonathan Ball. And now we've got the lounge behind us, which was a sort of spiritual home of Viola Beach. It is, Again, yeah. probably yeah. equally as big a tragedy. I mean, you can't compare tragedies, but a terrible tragedy in the town's history. But again, all the great work that the families have done yeah. since the tragedy, promoting uh, music in Warrington. Yes. Yeah. And uh, there we have it, the lounge behind us and the old post office. Yeah. And, it, and again, it's a way how the post office has been transformed into other uses. I was just about to say, actually, I never really got the connection. That's the old post office, Gary, <laughs> until you just said it. And it's obvious because it's got post office on the front of the building there. But I never thought of that, really. And it is an amazing building there. And I've passed this hundreds and hundreds, thousands of times. Because my old office used to be just around the corner here. That's just, I can't believe it. And you're right. You can look at the transformations building. I'm not sure what goes on upstairs. I think, is it dance studios or something? Well, there have I think. been a gym up there in the past. There has, There's certainly yeah. some leisure use up there. Yeah. But obviously on the corner here. Um, which is one of the best restaurants and one of the most well reputed restaurants obviously in Warrington, the Grill on the Square and that's part of the same group that has a couple of fantastic restaurants down the Treasury Building which we're just heading down to towards now. And of course, again, transformation and this is what we've been talking about over the it past is. couple of weeks how, how the town needs to adapt to survive with the death of the High Street. Yes, and I don't know if you noticed but all the streets changed as well so they've opened up the pavement allowing this cafe culture with all the tables and the chairs coming out here now and you know i guess it's been a lot of money spent here but i do feel that it's been money reasonably well spent here it has created a different feel the sort of um street furniture i think is a phrase that they've done here and if you just turn around here gary and have a look down here i mean the, the treasury front. building down there at the bottom i mean again it's an iconic building and you know a great facility full of great restaurants now it's superb I and mean, there's a um, institution bar there there's La Rambla, the Smoke, the San Lorenzo. Um, you've got some private dining rooms in there as well now. It's absolutely superb. And I recommend anyone who's not eaten or drunk in this area, please do come down. Now, it's a lovely you atmosphere. Know, we've talked about it so many times over the two other shows about the negative feeling a lot of people have towards the town centre. But I mean, look at this here now. I mean, to me, this is actually the jewel in the crown of Warrington and something the rest of the town centre can aspire to. I think you're absolutely right. And I think this has been a little bit of a kind of a silent, very quiet regeneration, this area here. I for sure come here and eat and drink now. And actually I prefer to come here than probably a lot of other places like Stockton Heath or Nutsford. There's something about this area that's really, really nice. It's got a nice feel to it. But also some of the restaurants here are absolutely superb. And they're very sensible prices as well. I think you can get lunch for a fiver at San Lorenzo, you can't can you? can do a special menu. I think they've got, is it four or five pizzas and four or five pastas for a fiver on the Monday to Friday lunch menu, which is just ridiculously good value. It's great. Uh, the council have invested here in the town centre with the new uh, street furniture here. And of course, we've got, as, as well as the treasury building with all the restaurants in, the Par Hall. Again, you know, there's a lot of comments about Warrington hasn't got a lot of entertainment or there's not enough to do in the town, but... We mentioned it last week, didn't we? We did. We get some great shows here at the oh, Par Hall. That's absolutely superb. I mean, is it Gabrielle's uh, performing here this year? A number of kiats, Jasper Carrot. Loads and loads of fabulous acts are coming here this year. And again, to remind people, it's a thousand-seater venue. That's a decent-sized venue, that. It's really good. Now, we've also mentioned about living accommodation in the town centre. Behind you there, yes. there's a classic example now of... Uh, town centre living. The United Rich Court, that's been there for, well, for a considerable number of years now. Architecturally, a really nice building. 
um, very, very popular. Um, commands actually really, really good rents. It's a very nice mix of ownership and rentals as well, which I think is really important. You need to have people living in a community, not just renting in a community. And I think there's some plans, I think, is it for the old vicarage building next to it over there? Yeah, I think well, there, the there was an application in for a nine-storey building, which I wasn't quite sure was in keeping with uh, yeah. the cultural quarter. But again, it's, if it does eventually come along and perhaps they'll scale down the development. Yeah, it, do something will... hopefully in sympathetic to this area, um, that that would be a really positive step forward, but I think it needs to be done in a sympathetic manner. Yeah, just behind you there, we've got the Pyramid Centre as well, which used to be the Crown Court building in Warrington, where I cut my teeth as a young journalist. <laughs> I didn't know that either. Uh, yeah, I spent, <laughs> spent many hours in there. And uh, yeah, it, again, it's shown how a building can be transformed uh, quite an artistic looking building there. I mean, yeah. you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Some people will say it's horrible, some people say it's beautiful. But actually inside, it's absolutely amazing, it's fantastic. I think maybe one of the shows we do in the future, Gary, maybe we can take, you know, our Warrington public that are looking at this, watching this, maybe take them in there and show them around, because some of the rooms in there are absolutely superb. And I think the same for the Par Hall. I think we need to do a bit of a tour around there sometime as well, Gary. Absolutely, and perhaps even inside the Treasury building, because. Yeah. I believe it or not, if you go and visit the institution, which is just down the steps there, that's where they used to keep all the town's money. And there's, there's a room in there where it's still got the old safe. They've turned the old safe where all the taxes were collected and the rents were collected and all the car cash was put in that safe. Yeah. And you can actually go and book the room and have a party in there now. Well, I think we need to uh, go and have a chat with the, uh, the Fox family, I think, yeah. that own it, and go and have a chat with them and do a bit of a video down there some evening. Yes. and uh, Maybe have a drink as well while we're doing absolutely. it. Absolutely. And here's the uh, Par Hall again. Some iconic bands have appeared here over the years. Even the Beatles have performed here. I think even the Rolling Stones might have been here. Certainly the likes of Slade, Sweet, and all those sort of bands over the years. Pantomimes going on. Panto's just finished, actually. Yeah, just, yeah. We've got Walker's Live. Yeah, there's the a Michael Elmer Jackson show, show coming. Yeah, Elmer Show for children. Yeah. It's now, what I like about the Cultural Quarter as well, it's so diverse because you've got, you've got the restaurants, you've got the theater, you've got the pyramid, You've got office accommodation, and you've got people living here. Yeah, it's, yeah, you're and right. this is what it's the whole town centre needs. It is, yeah, yeah, right. A really nice mix and a nice balance of it. Yes. Yes. So this is obviously down this area here. Well, very much these two rows here, which I love the architecture of these buildings here, and I think this is very much about offices, um, accountants, solicitors, and they're really nice offices. These they are absolutely superb. Here we've got FDR Law, one of the oldest established law firms in Warrington. You've got Holbrook and Co up here, um, Steeles, Watson's over there. There's some great legal firms here. Yeah, this um, kind of really is the heart of the legal community well, actually, of Warrington. I actually think this is the heart of Warrington. Yeah, and, I uh, do as well, yes. You know, it's very close to the town hall. Uh, it's one of the most historic parts of the town. And uh, we've got new businesses moving in here and all being well. Really? We're going to have a word with uh, yes. Andy Hibbert from iSupply. See if he's here. He's here. Here he is. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Andy. Andy. Nice, to nice to see you, you Gary. Well. Nice to see you, Gary. How are nice you? Nice to see you, Andy. We've just been talking about this, the cultural quarter. Yeah. Being the heartbeat of Warrington, the heart of Warrington. Yeah, very much so. Um, uh, you're a Warrington lad yourself. Warrington born and bred. So uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be situated in this part of town. You know, I've worked in Warrington on and off all my life. So to now have my own business uh, in what is, I class the heart of Warrington in such lovely surroundings is, is absolutely fantastic. So we started this show because there were so many negative things being said about Warrington, particularly the town centre. But there's so much to be positive about. And if you're positive... You know, Warrington... The economy in Warrington's booming. You know, we've got, uh, I think it's the best GVA outside of London. So, you know, the, the, the highest value for a, a, a good or a service or a product provided in an area, you know. So the economy itself is thriving. Um, unemployment is at a 40 year low. Um, That's you know, incredible, 40 yeah, year low. 40 year low, you know, the, the, the national average is, uh, I think it's 4.2, 4 4.3%. Warrington's unemployment rate currently stands at 3.4. So, you know, almost a full percentage lower than the national average, which is which is phenomenal. Um, home to over 8,000 businesses, um, you know, providing employment for over 120,000 people in the town. So, you know, the figures, you know, 
government stats show that we've got one of the best economies, not just in the north, you know, we're by far the best economy in the north, better than Liverpool, better than Manchester. Mm. You know, we are the powerhouse of the northern powerhouse, 100%. You know, we've got one of the best economies in the whole of Great Britain. Um, and, the, you know, the employment stats really back that up. If anything, we, we need more people in the town. Yes. Yeah, I think you've yes. told me before, you, you struggle to actually fill positions. Yeah, 100%. I mean, if, if I'd have had an extra 500 class one drivers, for example, pre-Christmas, I'd have had them all out to work. And I could probably have them all out to work now. You know, it's not just the driving sector; it's logistics as a whole, uh, the commercial sector. You know, before Christmas we were turning work away because we just didn't have enough people. You know, there's the the, the, the unemployment in the town is, is very, very, very low. So it's either people who, who physically can't work or or just generally don't want to. Mm. Um, you know, the town relies an awful lot on a transient workforce. You know, when uh, as we see those numbers decrease, you know, there's over 100,000 less uh, migrants working in the UK than there was this time last year. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we desperately need more people to come to this town so that we can get them out to work. So if people are looking for employment, yeah. how can I supply help them? So I supply specialises in uh, logistics, commercial recruitment, both temporary and perm. So if you wanted to uh, have a change of role or you're looking for work at the moment or you know someone who might be looking for work, dead easy, go on to our website, uh, which is www.isupplygroup.co.uk and you can register your details there. We'll then get you to come into the office, meet one of our fantastic team and we can find the role that's right for you and uh, get you out to work. And it's not just iSupply, you, you run the new Real 5 networking group as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so we launched that last year. We're coming up to our first birthday, Real 5 networking, which is specific for uh, Warrington-based businesses. Uh, we're a network where we uh, we aim to gain together and support each other through business referrals and general, you know, day-to-day -day support and, and opening doors for each other. It's, uh, it's, we meet once a month. Um, we're up to 50 members now. Uh, we've generated just over four million pounds in new business referrals in the last 11 months. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's brilliant. Things are going really well. well you, you, you've probably generated even more than that if I had the time to fill in all the uh, bits on the website. <laughs> you must update the website, Gary. Absolutely. Well, we've all joined the Real 5 networking group and because we're all positive about Warrington. Yep. We're all involved in the Love Warrington movement as well. So much to be positive about and it's great to see businesses thriving, doing well in the town centre. I was just saying to Gary before about the, the mixed, diverse use we've got here just in this small area of the town centre. Yeah. And this is what needs to be replicated moving along. Mm down the road here where you can see the building work going on commercial offices yeah, much so. your accommodation ownership and let out nice mixture of it i think i think and a leisure space i think you know the cultural quarter palmara square specifically shows perfectly well what you can do with the town when you get it right you know we've got we've got bars we've got restaurants we've got businesses we've got homes all in this one square and it works really really well and it's a it's a beautiful part of town the buildings are fantastic queen's gardens is a lovely place to you know go and have a walk on your lunch break or, or whatever it might be you know, down the road yeah but, you know i'm looking at the last um, video you guys did um yeah bridge street there's work to be done that's for sure we've got town square development yeah, should we take a walk over into the garden and see now yeah, that'd be great see some of the other stuff that's going on so i think once we get you know once we get bridge street right you know between we'll go all the way from town square through to palmar and the, yeah. the town center will be fantastic um you know to move the, the, as soon as this building came up we we were absolutely nailed on that we were going to take it you know yeah. we shut down two other offices to move here and um, not just because it's a great building but it's at the heart of town and you know, from a social aspect as well, it's great for the team to be able to finish work and pop down to one of the bars, whether it be Institution or San Lorenzo, you know, yeah. it's really good. Yeah. I mean, one of the negative things we always hear about in Warrington is the, the car parking situation. I mean, you both got businesses in the town centre. How do you find that yourselves? So we, um, you know, we've got parking behind our offices, but we also do contract hire spaces on the town hall car park as well. Um, and it's fairly reasonable it's not too bad yeah do, we've, I've just taken a lease on a full car park which is at the, just at the bottom end near the power hall there we've got seven eight spaces on there and again the, the, the charge actually works out around three pounds a day you know yeah. if you break it down per car we've also got some parking that comes with the building but you know if even if you do want to go further afield you know you can park for free in the market the, you know I don't 
I genuinely don't believe that parking the town centre is an issue anymore. No. You know, you can park outside our office for an hour, you know, for free. Yeah. So you can pull up, you can come in and see us, or you can nip into town, whatever you want to do. So it's it, it's not an issue for me. Yeah, we've got a few comments popping up from viewers while, while we're broadcasting. Uh, Brian Spooner has asked us to mention the Oktoberfest. That's the great annual event uh, which the Warrington Rotary Club hold at the Par Hall. Which uh, yeah. is, we've already shown it once, but it's just down there. Be this coming October. And talking to Rob Griffiths, I don't want to give too many secrets away, but I know he's involved in talks with Rotary about making it an even bigger and better event than it already is. Yeah, and if I've Rob's involved, I'm sure it will be. You know, yeah. He's, uh, he's, yeah. he's dab hand at yeah. doing a good job of stuff like that. And to clarify for our viewers, Rob is the gentleman behind the English Half Marathon. So when he knows, he's a gentleman and knows how to put on a fantastic event. And I think his office is in the pyramid now, it isn't is, it? It is, yes, he's yeah. moved there as well. We're neighbours, yes. yeah. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah. Now, uh, another comment here, someone's out saying, uh, what are we going to do to help the homeless? I mean, I, I've personally donated money to help the homeless situation in Warrington. It is a growing problem. We mentioned it last week, we more and more people out on Bridge Street. Uh, it is a, it's a problem, but it's not just a problem for Warrington. It's, a, it's probably a global problem. I think it's a, it's much, you know, it's a much bigger problem than just Warrington. But you know, our responsibility as business owners in, in the Warrington area is to try and support the local community, um, who, whoever that might be, whatever charity it might be. You know, we know that there's a, there are various facilities in the town centre for, for the homeless to to get some shelter and to get some food. But you know, I think as as, as business owners and business leaders, you know, we, we should be collaborating more to see how we can support and by by putting events on or or, or, sort of, or providing other facilities for people to use yes yeah. yeah now the history of the town is here in Warrington if we if we just carry on a bit we'll, we'll finish off our broadcast where we, we're all involved with uh, the Warrington Club which uh, is Warrington's oldest business networking organization dating back to the 1860s mm. and uh, you know the membership has been literally dying off yeah uh, but thanks to Rob Griffiths and a few other people it has now been re-energised and it, it is, as, as well as doing all the hard work, it's important to have a life away from work as well, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah, so, and this, yes. This, is, this is, for me, Warrington's best kept secret. Well, yeah, it is, it yeah. is absolutely. You know, it's not a secret anymore. Well, it's not a secret yeah, anymore, yeah. no, it, it's not, but uh, I was, uh, I think it was you and Rob actually first told me about it and, yeah. you know, strong-armed me into joining, but yeah. uh, it, it is, it, it, you know, what a place, you know, steeped in history. You know, you've got your name in the book with people like Joseph Crossfield and, and Laporte, yeah. Yeah. Greenalls, and God, the, 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 the list goes on of people who were the original Warrington worthies. The pillars of our society. The pillars of our society yes. who, who, who put this place together yeah. in 1876, I believe. I thought it was 1867. 1867, maybe, yeah. you're right. Um, but it's a building most people don't recognise. Yeah, they don't. Oh. That's yeah. a quite interesting yeah. thing about it. It's there, right on the corner there. It used to be Richard Shaw Opticians. We've got Gail from Blooming Art in there now, who's got a great community facility in there, yeah. doing a lot of art classes for people who've got uh, health issues, and she's really putting her heart and soul into the organisation. And, yeah. you know, when it was first formed, women weren't even allowed through the door, but now they're welcome with open arms and it's open to the whole community, literally. You know, I know someone was telling me uh, just before Christmas that the Volstead bar which is obviously the, the building's been converted to Volstey, that used to be the old stables. That's right, the so coach the people house, used yeah, to yeah. come in there, the coach house used to you know, put the horses in there and then go into the club. And that just goes to show how old this yeah. institution is. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. It, it, and I've met, some, I've met some fantastic people in there as well. Uh, like Gary said, the, there was an ageing population, should we say, in the, uh, in the membership. But, you know, the guys who uh, have been able to, and, and ladies who have, who have met there, have, have got a rich history of Warrington and, and some very experienced people there yeah. in terms of the, the various professions. And it's nice to go in there for your lunch, um, maybe have a game of snooker and uh, catch up with, with, with the members. It's, yeah. it's, it's a great place. It's a super place. Yeah. So... That's the end of our episode three of the Love Warrington show, Gary. And yes. I think this absolutely, the cultural quarter does sum it up. We've said it before, it's the heart of Warrington. It's got the history of Warrington. It's got the business community of Warrington. Mm -hmm. It's got the nightlife of Warrington, the sort of nightlife that we want in the town, not, not yeah. the low end, lower end of Bridge Street where we have all the troubles with the late night drinking and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this, facility, this part of town literally is now starting to attract people from all over Warrington and from further afield. It is, yes. I just want to say thank you, Andy, for coming and joining us today. You're welcome. I it's really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Andy. Thanks thank for having you. me. Thank you. And uh, we'll be back in the next week or so with another show on the Love Warrington show. Thank you, folks. Cheers.